If you would like a free newsletter on this or other subjects, just give us a call at Christian Answers. The phone number is area code 512-218-8022. That's 512-218-8022. Or you could email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's cdebater at aol.com. There are different positions on this issue. One position states that it is possible to lose your salvation, but only if you want to. In other words, having been set free from sin, the person is then able by an act of their own will to deny the Lord and desire not to be part of him any longer. Now, as far as this first position about losing your salvation, as you can see from my King James Bible here out of Romans chapter 8, starting in verse 26 and going down the page. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Cross-reference that to Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 21. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And of course, reference that to Ephesians chapter 3, verses 18 through 20. As we can see from this entire passage, it's the Holy Spirit within the believers who have been justified by God himself. And they are indwelt by the, the Holy Spirit who intercedes for them. And as we get to the back part of this passage here, you can see again for yourself. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor and that could be your future works or whatever, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature. And that includes the person themselves. The one who's indwelt by the Spirit, he's part of this all these things mentioned by the Apostle Paul here that can't separate us 
from the love of God. So obviously this first position of people who, who say you can lose your salvation by their own act of their own will is impossible based on Romans chapter 8. And we see it right here, particularly in verses 38 and 39. Another position states that it is possible for you to lose your salvation if you sin too much. Then you need to go and confess your sin and get saved again. This has obvious problems because it could lead to someone trusting in his works and God's grace to be saved. Now, the second position states it's possible to lose your salvation if you sin too much, but and then you have to get re-saved. You can get saved, lost, saved, lost. It's sort of like a ping pong ball going back and forth. You're saved one day, lost the next, depending on how many sins you commit. And of course, that directly ties into salvation by works, which is a a damnable heresy. But anyway, go back to Hebrews 6, which I already referenced to before earlier. Hebrews 6 here, as you can see, the key passage there as we went over before from uh, Hebrews 6, verses 4 through 6. But I want to focus in and answering this second position on losing your salvation. What does it say in Hebrews 6, 4? It says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word, and go on to verse 5, and have tasted the good word of God and the power of the world to come, go on to verse 6, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh, and have put him to an open shame. Well, how obvious can it get? If somebody falls away from the faith, and crucifies the Lord of glory afresh and puts Christ to an open shame. In this case, falling away or losing your salvation. It says right here in verse 4, it is impossible to renew them in the faith. So there's no way you can be saved and lost, saved and lost. If you lose it, it's impossible to get it back again. So the second position of people saying you can be saved, lost, or whatever, and it's depending on how many works you do. So anyway, when you get these people that say you can lose your salvation based on the second position I'm outlining here, just keep in mind one of their own proof texts to say you can lose your salvation actually refutes one of their positions. Of course, we already know that this passage isn't really talking about uh, real believers. It's talking about unbelievers. But you give them their premise that you can lose your salvation. And Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 through 6 proves that. Well, if you grant them their premise here, then verse 4 through 6 say it's impossible to renew these people back to faith in Christ. Once they've blown it and lost their salvation, they can never get it back. They can go to a hundred altar calls and it won't make any difference. This, this passage says it's impossible to renew them. And to say that you can be lost one day and be saved the next and lost again, it's impossible, the scripture says. So here, the very passage these lose your salvation people would use refutes one of their positions in undeniable terminology. One last thing I'd like to say about Hebrews 6 verses four through six, which is used by people who say you can lose your salvation is their whole argument is totally destroyed anyway, based on Hebrews chapter six. Because if you simply look down to verse nine, what does it say? In verse nine, it says, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. Well, voila, there you have it. Verse 9 shows the difference between these people mentioned in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 through 6, who are apostates and lost people, and true Christians who are separated and differentiated from these people in verse 9. Verse 9 saying, but beloved, talking to true Christians, not false Christians or false professors, as we have earlier in this chapter. If you like our YouTube channel, please subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button and then by also clicking the bell above to get an automatic update whenever we produce another YouTube video for our See Answers TV channel. 
Please share our videos with your friends and relatives. May God bless you. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what is done for Christ will last. See related videos by tapping or clicking screens.